Hi everyone and welcome to the next segment of the Endgame series. This time we're going to look at the principle of two weaknesses, which is probably one of the most widely recognized ideas in the Endgame. The point is that in order to win in chess, it's rarely enough that the opponent has one weakness. It's often necessary to create a second one that can be probed simultaneously. A good example of this principle was given by Vladimir Kramnik in the final game of his World Championship match against Peter Lecko in 2004. Lecko was a point ahead with one game remaining and so Kramnik had to win in order to retain his title. If it was a draw then of course Lecko would have become World Champion. I'll go quickly through the first 20 or so moves to get to the position that's the most instructive. Kramnik was white, he opened with e4 and Lecko played a Carol can, which is not surprising for him because it's a uh, very solid defense and he's known to be a very solid um, player. And you'll see in a second now the queens come off the board, which Leko was hoping would make things a lot simpler, and it does, of course, but Kramnik is an expert in playing without queens. It's one of the ways that. He uh, outplayed Kasparov when he won the world title off him. Okay, so now comes Knight takes h5 anyway. And this is the position I want to talk about. Kramnik has some pressure on the king's side, especially along the g-file here for his rook. And also he has uh, a good bishop in comparison to this bishop because black's pawns are on light squares. Most of these pawns are on dark squares, so the white's bishop has uh, more mobility and overall white has a small edge in this position, about half a pawn but as always Leko is very solid and in order to increase the pressure Kramnik now opened up a second front on the queen side with b4 so now came a6 to stop b5 and now a4 it's very energetic play from Kramnik, he's offering his a pawn in order to penetrate to the seventh rank with the rook Jan Timmen was of the opinion at the time that this was definitely the critical plan. Um, playing instead, for example, king e3 allows black the simple king e7, where his position remains very solid, and if he's allowed time to connect his rooks like this and perhaps exchange off one of them down the c file, white's initiative will evaporate. So White's advantage here is temporary, and as Steinitz pointed out over a hundred years ago, he must therefore act immediately and energetically. And a4 is certainly one way of doing that. And Leko answered with king d8, which is a passive response that gives Kramnik a lot of freedom and allows him to initiate immediately play on both sides of the board, which he executes with great style. Black had two better alternatives. One was King e7, which Kramnik himself thought was best, and after the game gave the line b5, a takes b5, a takes b5, bishop d7, rook c7, attacking the b7 pawn. So b6, and now knight g5, threatening knight takes f7, and if king takes f7, rook takes d7. And rook h c8 is the best way to deal with that now rook takes c8 is the line that he gave after the game but later he said that rook b7 may be an improvement which um, you know because after for example rook cb8 rook takes b8 rook takes b8 rook a1 white is threatening to come to a7 next and retains some pressure um, but the analysis that he gave was uh, rook takes c8 after the game now rook takes c8 and knight takes f7 which is a small combination to win a pawn after king takes f7, bishop g6 check, king f8, bishop takes h5. But now rook c4 from black, attacking the d4 pawn, so king e3 to defend it. And now rook c3 check, king f4 and rook d4, and sorry d3. And here black would have good chances for a draw, which of course would have been well enough for Liko given the situation that he was in. So that was one good alternative move. And the other one, instead of king d8, was not knight g5, because it's black to move, it was bishop takes a4. And uh, this allows 
white to rook on a seventh and bishop b5 is the best way to continue if instead bishop c6 then knight g5 and white has a big edge and in this position white has a, a choice of continuations rook takes b7 is the first but this isn't too dangerous for black because he can trade off his inferior bishop and castle to connect his rooks and his problems are pretty much over perhaps better is bishop b1 which preserves the bishop but again black has no real problems after for example rook d8 rook takes b7 rook d7 rook b8 check rook d8 rook takes d8 check king takes d8 knight g5 threatening to win the exchange so king e7 now rook c1 f6 rook c7 check and bishop g7 and once more black is completely solid so perhaps Liko should have accepted the pawn sacrifice given his position though of course he wanted to keep things solid and uncomplicated which is usually his forte but here Kramnik's combined play on both wings proved too much for him to handle to return to the game continuation that's king d8 that's what Liko played and Kramnik answered with knight g5 threatening knight takes f7 winning the exchange which Liko dealt with by playing bishop e8 and now comes b5 and we're seeing in action the principle of two weaknesses with play on both sides of the board simultaneously Liko answered with knight f4 if instead a takes b5 now comes bishop takes b5 and it's hard for black to cover f7 effectively so knight f4 and now b6 which secures an invasion square for white on the 7th rank now knight takes d3 which is hoping to simplify but now black is left with a bad bishop against a good knight with king takes d3 and now rook c8 to stop rook c7 which would come with tempo but now comes rook takes c8 check king takes c8 rook c1 check and now white can force the winning of a pawn the threat is uh, rook c7 next which is going to be very strong so Liko swapped his f pawn for Kramnik's h pawn with bishop c6 and after knight takes f7 rook takes h4 but now comes knight d6 check which is a very strong outpost for the knight which comes with tempo because it's check and king d8 is the only playable response if instead king d7 now comes the tactical shot knight takes b7 and white is winning if bishop takes b7, rook c7 check, king d8, rook takes b7 with a winning rook and pawn endgame. So king d8, and now rook g1, transferring attention again to the opposite side and now hitting the fresh weakness in black's game is g pawn. So rook h3 check from Liko. Playing instead rook h7 is much too passive and in fact probably losing after a5, king e7, and rook g6. So rook h3 check, king e2, rook a3, rook takes g7, and rook takes a4. So material stays even, but white is still better positionally. And now comes another energetic move from Kramnik with f4, which is very nice forceful play. With his pieces perfectly placed, it's certainly time to play aggressively. And rook a2 check is how Liko continued, which is sending the white king where he wants to go, but there was little else to play. Rook takes d4 is losing after f5, which forces e takes f5, and now e6, threatening e7 check, and queening with check from the rook, because the king will have to move to the seventh rank. So it forces rook e4 check. Now knight takes e4, d takes e4, rook c7, with the threat of rook takes c6, creating a second pass pawn for white is too much for black to deal with and again the idea of two weaknesses is the crucial concept this is completely winning for white so rook a2 check king f3 rook a3 check king g4 and rook d3 looking for counterplay on the d pawn but now we have a similar continuation to that which we just saw with f5 and suddenly white is winning especially after rook takes d4 check king g5, e takes f5, and king f6, which gets an exclamation mark because it forces mate in seven moves, no matter how black plays. 
We'll return to the idea of king activity later in the series. Suffice to say for now that this king penetration is decisive. Liko desperately tried to exchange rooks with rook g4, but of course Kramnik was having none of it and played rook c7, maintaining his 7th rank rook and inducing a blunder from Liko that quickened his demise with rook h4 because now it's mate in 3 with knight f7 check and here Liko resigned, he only has one move king e8, now rook c8 check, again giving black only one move which is king d7 and now rook d8 is mate so a fine example of the principle of two weaknesses in action from Kramnik who retained his title of world champion after this superb victory. Okay, that's the end of part one.